Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and you've probably heard people talk about what a great investment guns are. And I want to talk about that idea today, because, well, let's just start off, be really clear, I don't think guns are that great of an investment. I think they're kind of a misguided investment. If you want to actually build wealth, which is the idea of investing, uh, you want something where your money is actually going to do work for you and build real value. Buying a bunch of guns, what you're doing is hoping, assuming, um, guessing, that people are going to want those guns fundamentally more in a few years than they do now. Because the prices are always going to be going up with inflation, that's what we see with gun prices always going up. Uh, but if the gun doesn't actually become fundamentally more valuable to people, it'll go up with inflation at the same rate that everything else does. And in fact, if we look at the trend in firearms prices just as an overall very general thing from the 1950s, it hasn't changed much. Some stuff's gone up a little bit in price, some stuff's actually come down, ammunition is cheaper today. Um, even today, today it's cheaper than it was in the 50s or 60s. Uh, but fundamentally, gun values just track with inflation. So I think they're a really good store of value. You can, if you buy good collectible guns, you're not going to lose money in the long term. But you're not really going to gain any money in the long term either. If you want to do that, look at something like businesses, uh, stock market investing, that sort of thing. Now, I'm certainly not a stock market expert, and uh, that's not even close to the subject of today's video. Well, let's say that even having gone through that, you still want to try and invest in guns to maximize value, as opposed to investing in guns because you like them and you're interested in them, which I think is a, is a bit healthier. But certainly, even if it's an, uh, you're trying to build a collection uh, of guns that you are interested in, there are a number of things that are that you should pay attention to if you want to have them go up in value as much as possible. So, first off, you need knowledge. Um, it's, it's no good to spend money on something that turns out to be fake, for example. Or to have someone intimate that a gun is particularly rare and unusual when it's actually not. Uh, the only way to effectively do that is to have knowledge, to learn the specifics of the subject matter that you're trying to collect. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is you kind of need to specialize. Uh, and the more specialized knowledge you have about a specific type of firearm, the better off you'll be. Uh, to be able to find those things that are truly underappreciated, things where the seller doesn't recognize what they are, uh, or things where you can recognize that there's a miss, an imbalance in the market that will probably be corrected at some point. A good example of one that hasn't really worked itself out yet are Nambu pistols. We've got the Type 14s and the Type 94s. 14s, by the way, look like Lugers, sort of. The 94s just kind of look ugly. And they're worth more or less the same, like the prices on them are pretty much the same. But what people apparently haven't really caught on to is there are a lot more Type 14s manufactured than there were 94s. The 94 ought to be an intrinsically significantly more valuable gun than the 14, and at some point that's probably going to come out. And when it does, Type 94 prices are going to go up uh, relative to Type 14s. So being able to recognize imbalances like that in the market is a great way to get things for a you know get a better deal on something uh, if you're willing to hold it for the long term. Uh, number two, quality. There's there are people who like there are people who like every different kind of firearm from stuff that just looks like it was dragged under a truck um, to things that look like they're brand new out of the factory. I personally fall in the middle. I don't actually really like having guns that are totally pristine. I prefer something that shows a bit of wear. But those guns never may, never grow in value or grow in demand the way that really nice pristine ones do. In general, if you want to maximize price increase over time, your best bet is focusing on the highest quality possible examples. And part of the reason for that is those are always the ones that are going to be worth the most, but it also means if the market slows down, um, if, if more of these guns become available, because stuff is getting imported all the time, and it's really hard to predict what's going to be coming onto the market next, uh, the high quality examples are always going to be the ones that are sold, that are most, that are easiest to sell. 
Um, if people get less interested in Mosin Nagants, for example, let's say you had some great Mosin Nagants that you bought in the 80s before uh, the fall of generally the Warsaw Pact, when there weren't a lot of Mosin Nagants necessarily around. If you had some kind of junkers, uh, their value basically went through the floor when the market got flooded with Mosin Nagants. But if you had something really nice, its value probably still went down because the the quantity, the supply of Mosins in general went way up. But if you had something really nice, it was going to survive and hold its value better than the ones that weren't in such good condition. And uh, that always applies. Um, you can see it in, in auction prices, like especially with machine guns. As the quality uh, as the quality increases, the price, the value increases sort of exponentially. The difference between you know a 95 and a 98 and the 99 and a 100 percent totally mint gun gets really pretty substantial. And so if you're focused on maintaining value, look for the higher end of quality. That's going to be your better place. Um, be aware that if you are actually doing this to try and build money, you have to be willing to sell the stuff. So there's a weird line at which this crosses from being an investor, you know, a collector who's investing in guns, to someone who's actually a dealer who has turned this into a business of buying low and selling high. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not even I have no intimation that there's anything wrong with that. It's I have lots of friends who are gun dealers. Um, and they do a valuable service in making things more readily available for other people to find and buy. Instead of you having to go to a thousand gun shows and uh, you know and talk to a thousand people walking in the door looking to sell what might be a cool gun or might be a really boring gun, dealers do all that work for you. They of course then add a, add uh, add their work, their effort to the price, sell the thing higher. But it means you don't have to spend the time looking for it. Anyway. Um, but if you turn this into a business, then you're not so much making money by investing in guns, you're making money transactionally by finding low, selling high. So that's a little bit different. If you just buy and never sell, you're a collector, you're not really an investor because, well, it may be a great investment for your survivors if, you know, when you keel over dead someday. Um, but if you're not actually selling it yourself, are you really in this as an investment, or are you in it as a collectible? And I think there's a lot to be said for buying guns. You don't want to pay more than you know, way more than they're worth. But the idea that I'm buying it because I'm interested in it, not because I expect it to go up in value. I think that's a, a very worthy thing. That's what I tend to do. I don't look at my own personal collection as something that is going up in value, and that's a great thing because now it's worth more. Because I don't plan to sell it. I really don't want to get rid of it. So. I'm not that concerned with what the day-to-day the -day price of something is, beyond of course the price is going up and it being really hard to buy a lot of stuff anymore. Anyway, um, one of the other things to keep in mind if you're trying to invest in firearms is stuff does go down. Uh, you can never necessarily predict what's going to go up and go down. Uh, there was a time, for example, after the, the Great Recession, machine gun prices went down and stayed down for a while. Because there were a lot of people who had been spending a lot of discretionary income in the luxury goods market, like machine guns in the United States. And after the Great Recession, they had a lot less money to play with. They stopped spending it in machine guns and the prices went down. It happens. Um, you know, machine gun prices are something that people tend to just assume are constantly and always and inevitably rising. Uh, the rising cost of ammunition, the the general uh, lack of surplus ammunition today has very much reduced the value, the prices of uh, belt-fed, heavy, water-cooled machine guns. They used to be a gun that people really liked to be able to buy to take out and just blast thousands and thousands of rounds a day uh, recreationally. And you could do that when ammo was, say, two cents a round. Well, now ammo is like 30, 40, 50, 60 cents a round. There's a lot less of that machine gun shooting going on, and that has directly impacted the prices of those guns. Vickers guns, Maxim guns, they're not worth, like if you bought into those at the height of the market, you're going to lose money if you try and sell them today, which a lot of people think is impossible in the machine gun market. And yet, it, it can absolutely happen. You need to be careful and understand what it is that you're buying. Uh, 
And I guess one final last suggestion for people would be commemorative guns. Don't buy commemorative guns. Don't ever buy commemorative guns. The Winchester 94s and the 1911s and the, the various battle commemoratives and the various historical figure commemoratives, that is like buying the collectible china on the home shopping network. Nobody ever is going to pay more for that than you pay for it yourself when it's brand new. Um, trust me, if you take that to a gun store to try and sell it, the dealers are laughing at you the moment that you're not looking anymore because, well, or cringing, they're sad for you probably. Um, because that stuff never ever goes up in value. Nobody ever wants it. Um, nobody cares. So if you want to invest in guns, know your subject matter, look for high quality examples, and don't fool yourself that if you don't sell it, you're not actually really investing, you're just collecting, and that's a great thing too. Anyway, hopefully this has been a, a bit interesting for you guys. Thanks for watching.